as I think Leonardo said, in order to go on from where I left off, you must begin where I began. There's such a wonderful resource in the art of the past. I can remember running all the way back from the railway station on a trip to the beach because I'd forgotten my sketchbook. I meant to go back and get it. People remember me as a tiny tot sitting on the beach and drawing. The family gave me pencil and paper and once I had that in my hand I was contented. All I wanted to do was be some sort of a mechanic or a my father actually got me an apprenticeship with a marine engineer, but before I actually took that up, uh, my mother took my drawings up to the National Art School up at Darlinghurst, and she said, look, they like your drawings very much and they'll take you without uh, a test. The headmistress was absolutely furious that I had left school to go. If she'd known that I was going to do art, she wouldn't have wasted my, her uh, educating me. We did two years of, of technical perspective drawing, that's not even done now, and we did sign writing and lettering. In fact, I was able to put myself through art school just doing signs and lettering, and I still do signs. I just did a sign yesterday for someone in the village who wanted a new sign on, on the hall, and I love doing it. I also got some part-time teaching, and then when I was 21, I was invited to join the full-time staff. I was fairly new and young at the whole thing, but I was a good teacher and a good explainer. I stayed there for the next 30-odd years. I love teaching. I just absolutely adore teaching. It's just as creative as painting in its own way. I invite people, come up, bring your folder of work. I'm happy to sit down and go through it for you and see where the strengths and weaknesses are. And that's a nice thing to do because all you're dealing with is their work. You're not imposing yourself on them. You're just showing them what they're doing and how to do it better. And you get very fond of your students. They're just lovely humans. Every line goes somewhere, but everything is going around the back or going from somewhere to somewhere. Van Dyck and Rubens, they didn't just paint pretty pictures of people, they painted compositions with wonderful drama. Isn't that a beauty? Isn't that a lovely thing? Look at the poise and drama of that. The hand really, it's, it's alive. I used to do a lot of watercolours out of doors because I had the kiddies and it was easier if you are on holidays to do a watercolour. You couldn't put oil paint in the car, the little kids, and <laughs> get them sticky all over. And uh, it was something you could do while they were swimming or doing something. So I tended to do, probably for 20 years, a lot of landscape painting. And I always remember our family doctor, she had a lovely property up at Bathurst, a fantastic place to, to paint. And she used to say to me, you know dear, you do paint the landscapes very well, but not everyone can do figures. She said, I think you should concentrate more on your figures because lots of artists can't do that and you can. When I went up to her 100th birthday, I said, I took your advice, you know, Nancy, and it's paid off. The human figure it gives you the most wonderful interaction in a movement of muscles as a counteracting movement to keep you upright, otherwise you'll fall over. If you reach out that way, your other leg will probably go out to counterbalance, which is the basis of good composition in painting. You know, you can feel the stresses and strains in that figure because you're a human too. You're a human. If you're drawing another human, it's much more interesting than drawing a box. A box can't talk to you. When I had my dear Robin for 26 years, he'd sit over there, uh, I said, I don't know what to paint. And he'd say, have you ever thought of painting eggshells? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> have you ever thought of doing a line of print? Oh, no, that's easy. So now I have to find my own inspiration. Usually once you come over and you pick up a brush, but that's where I love having models, like I had you today, because there's a model, there's paint. Wow, let's get on with it. That's a grey that I've made by mixing alizarin and viridian together. It's one of the best greys you can make. Never used acrylics because they were invented after I was born. <laughs> Robin's been gone for two years, but that was the last painting I did uh, when he was alive. And, and that's just a grisaille like Van Dyke 
would have done. And he came along and he said, can't you get your figures up in the air? I said, Robin, they don't. They walk on the ground. They don't walk up in the air. So I gave him a brush and he did that. But he opened doors for me. It was brilliant. And I think if I hadn't had him, I wouldn't have been as successful as I've been in the last 20 odd years. My father had worked because he was inventing things. He needed somebody, a metal manufacturer, to make one of his models for something. So I remember him coming home one day and saying, do you know Robin Norley? And I said, oh, he's another art student. But I said, he's, he's so clever. All the teachers think he's a genius and I've never spoken to him. And my, my dad said, yes, well, he's an awfully nice chap, dear. Where were you? I said, getting on in my art. <laughs> so, but I only really came to know him many years later when he came to work for me at the college. And I started to realise what a brilliant teacher he was. And, and then we did a bit of travelling and just went from there. I think we were one of the greatest partnerships in our history. And I think, you know, we were absolutely like that. We were just thought the same way, taught the same way. It was just a lovely double act. And it's, that double act isn't there anymore. Robin and I were just driving down to have a look at the camping ground and uh, fell over this gallery. It was already a gallery. Robin just casually said to her, is there anything for sale in town, like a little shack or something? Well, she said, no, serious, do you want to buy this place? Yeah. Oh, it's a wonderful place. The environment here is wonderful. Fishermen along the beach, yeah, that's half my fishermen things, pulling in the nets and tipping over the boats and all of that. That's wonderful. Everything's here. So I often do several versions of anything I do as a means of getting to know the subject, you see. See if you cover that, see how the arch comes forward over the top of your head. Mm. See that? Now, it'll do that, it immediately it's, it gives its gravitas. But I'm an idealist, you know, I still somehow believe that there should be some place for visual composition, the relationship of this against that, the yin and the yang of things that work together. I remember one kid had uh, his work on the wall and he had a note under it. The work should speak for itself. I'm not going to write a lot of rubbish about it. I thought, beauty. It should be able to stand on its own like a piece of music does. You don't have to, even if you're a, a contemporary musician, you don't have to preclude your concert with a, a two-page essay for the audience. They'd, they'd laugh at you. You're overwhelmed by the grandeur of the music and the relationship of one part to another, etc. It speaks for itself. When I retired 20 odd years ago, I had 75 part-time teachers, eight full-time teachers, 800 students. That's a full program, three technical assistants and a storeman, and a full-time secretary. Now, all that's gone because the state government doesn't see any point in having a TAFE course running up because they can't see that there's a job at the end of it. Actually, most of our students ended up in some art-related industry. If you train a plumber, well, you do expect him to see him outside somewhere joining a pipe together. Whereas if they look back on the whole history of humanity, they'd see that culture is the thing that really lasts. What we remember of the Greeks and the Romans and the Etruscans and whatever is their creative output and their culture. That's what's still there. And having people that come in and get a, a buzz out of it and say, this is wonderful, that is very, very special.